Hi, uh, this is Marian. So welcome uh, to the first uh, tutorial of Office 365 uh, and uh, I'm going to run through uh, the various uh, uh, applications and uh, options present in the admin center. All right. And here we are in the Office 365 admin center. And uh, once you log into the portal.office.com, you land on this page. And when you click on admin, you get to this page. All right. So firstly, uh, this is the old admin center. And if you would like to try the new one, you can toggle the switch, but I'm not going to do it. So let's quickly uh, run through all these options. Uh, the notifications come up here for the uh, global administrator. So be it anything right from an email or a user being provisioned, everything comes up here. And uh, here is the gear option where you get to uh, change the themes, uh, change the time zone and uh, you can change your password as well by uh, getting into this and uh, well uh, you have a contact preference uh, option as well uh, this is the password uh, part so you can update the uh, 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 contact preference if microsoft uh, would like to give you a call uh, you can very well go to this and uh, you can change the phone number that is being uh, provided or the email address which has been listed and uh, lastly uh, to the top right uh, here is your profile and you can sign out uh, this is as usual and you can update your picture so going on to the main part this is the home and underneath that you've got users groups resources billing support settings setup reports health admin centers all right so let's run into users so under users you've got active users here is where you create users and you assign license to them and like you see here i have an office 365 e3 trial version and uh, uh, well, you can click on add user and you can uh, start creating users and uh, assign license to them and uh, You've got the contacts you can add contacts be it external uh, uh, Well, you can uh, add it manually or through PowerShell. So this is why you do it and uh, the third part is going to be uh, the uh, guest users all right so guest users is nothing but uh, you can invite uh, users from outside the organization and uh, they can have access to the office 365 groups which we will cover up a little uh, uh, later after this um, so pretty much uh, when uh, the guest user uh, option is turned on uh, everyone in your organization can add guest users to an office 365 group um, well, the guests, uh, like I said, will have access to the features of the Office 365 group and uh, well, the admin can still allow or not allow the uh, guests to access the uh, uh, entire organization's uh, uh, Office 365 group or for the individual Office 365 groups. So uh, it can be decided by the uh, administrator. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to go deep into this because I'm going to cover it up uh, in a separate uh, uh, video so i'm just going to see uh, show you uh, the basic uh, options in this okay so deleted users which pretty much uh, is self-explanatory well when you delete an active user it goes to the deleted state all right so that's the deleted user you can restore it as well and that goes back to the uh, uh, active users uh, part and uh, there are certain uh, uh, number of days wherein you can restore users and uh, we can see it in detail later so groups this is one of the most interesting and important features and uh, you've got uh, uh, well various groups and uh, the uh, some of them are like office 365 groups distribution list mail enable security groups security groups group with teams group with dynamic membership okay so office 365 groups is what uh, we normally use it's got uh, empty number of features and um, a group of members can be added to an office 365 group and they can share uh, well information on all the office 365 products and everything is like synced right from teams skype onedrive everything so that's a cool feature and distribution list is like in the uh, uh, old uh, versions well uh, you can create a list say you can create a list called marketing and uh, you can have a bunch of users under that list and uh, a mail can be sent to that list 
um, so that uh, all the users under the marketing can receive it and uh, mail enabled security group and security group so security groups are nothing but uh, a group which uh, for which the users can be added to that group and uh, a common license over something uh, like a resource mailbox can be assigned to that group okay so a mail enabled security group is nothing but you can uh, uh, send out an email to that security group however the mail enabled security group itself does not have a separate exchange mailbox uh, rather it, the mails will go to the users exchange mailbox so that's uh, the uh, common uh, confusion which comes up with mail enabled security groups well uh, the group with teams groups with dynamic memberships uh, all these things are here and I'm not going to look into it real deep you can cover it some other time shared mailboxes again uh, a mailbox without a license onto which uh, users can be added uh, with ownership permission and they can send as uh, the shared mailbox and uh, this is another one and resources like I said, rooms and uh, and equipment uh, mailboxes. So if you have a, a printer uh, or a, 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 some, some room which a lot of people uh, make use of in an organization, you can create a mailbox for that and you can assign uh, uh, ownership permissions to the person who owns it so that uh, uh, the other users can uh, book uh, the equipment or the room itself and uh, this is uh, the room and equipment uh, mailbox use and we've got sites and uh, this is uh, something to regarding uh, the SharePoint sites you can create a site you can add a site and uh, uh, you can uh, go about uh, performing all your SharePoint activities here and public website is another uh, a new feature well if you uh, happen to buy a website like a domain I'm sorry from GoDaddy or Wix you can add it onto Office 365 and uh, uh, well you can go about uh, having it under the Microsoft uh, platform well uh, I'm not going I'm not going to go uh, uh, deep into that as well we can cover it on another video all right um, we have billing here purchase services subscriptions licenses bill payments bill billing accounts payment methods billing notification everything comes under this all right and uh, so pretty much uh, everything is said here and self-explanatory and whatever licenses you have it will be listed here so that's under billing support uh, you can create a new service request with Microsoft that's a free ticket you can either click on need help to the bottom right corner or you can click on new service request and raise the service request and uh, ask your queries regarding the office 365 products and uh, you can also view the service requests which has already been opened and uh, next is settings and you have services and add-ins and uh, this is another uh, important feature uh, well, uh, the global administrator or the administrator can deploy add-ins separately for the users and this is another uh, cool feature wherein the administrator has a lot of control over the add-ins for the uh, user. Um, and the next one is security and privacy and you can set your password policy and uh, you can set the privacy policy for the organization and you can also control the sharing of uh, uh, well information to people outside your organization and the next one is organization profile wherein uh, you can set the release preferences and uh, uh, manage themes for your organization and you can do umpteen number of things here for the organization okay and partner relationship if your tenant which is the uh, uh, MarianTesting.onMicrosoft.com. If this tenant is being taken care of by a partner, he will be listed here. So this is uh, this has something to do with the partner's uh, relationship with your organization. And setup, well, uh, setup covers the products that you have. 
okay so the licenses uh, that you own and uh, you can check the status whether it's active or not and you can add a newly bought domain from godaddy over here and you can make use of that email address and this is where you come and add your domains and uh, the last one is for data migration and you can upload a PST, you can migrate uh, mails from Gmail uh, to the Office 365 and all these things are under this and reports so under reports we have usage this shows you how much you've used uh, the utilization uh, in your uh, uh, organization uh, and uh, we've got a lot of options here and uh, based on the applications you can check the usage and this is uh, a very important reporting tool security and compliance and this is used for auditing uh, protection everything okay everything comes under this and uh, the last but second is health you can check the service health for the applications here okay and uh, open incidents everything gets covered here you can take a look at it and uh, message center and uh, this also uh, contains the messages for the uh, uh, applications uh, health wise and if uh, any uh, update has come up or a major incident has happened everything comes up here okay and the last one is the admin centers and it's called it's got exchange teams sharepoint onedrive yammer power apps flow security and compliance and uh, it's got uh, all these uh, um, admin centers here okay and uh, we'll take a look at it uh, so in the upcoming videos so this is pretty much it and uh, this was a quick uh, uh, video about what the uh, office 365 admin center holds stay tuned for the upcoming videos thank you so much and you have a wonderful day goodbye